Well, hello again. Uh, today we're in uh, Lincolnshire, just outside of Wisbeach, um, on a very heavy land farm, uh, which is um, just started direct drilling this time last year. Uh, the farm is owned by the Sly family. Um, the Sly uh, family run a, um, a direct drilling and engineering business. And what's so fantastic is that they've taken on the farm this last autumn and this is going to be a farm to show how we can convert towards uh, direct drilling and minimal cultivations going forward. Um, what's so great about this farm is that it's a, it's a very difficult soil. Um, I would describe it really as a silt clay with a, just a slight scattering of sand. Um, so what this means really is that the soils are very tight. Um, they have huge potential, lots of nutrition here. Um, but one of the biggest limitations is uh, the fact that they, they, they go very tight, they get waterlogged. Uh, we have poor biological uh, situation, no air, and the availability nutrition and establishment of crops can be very difficult. So this is quite a challenge for the family, but the one thing they have in their favour really is that they have a massive array of equipment um, that they can bring uh, to, to the whole system. And it's not necessarily about direct drilling as such that we're pushing or talking about as being uh, the, the change within the system. It's just uh, a part of a process of, of us being able to manage soils in a, in a far better way. So if you come to the area and traditionally you look at what people do, the, the plough is a, a great option. Um, the general thing is if, if you, if you plough uh, just prior to the autumn, if we have a hard winter, the drying and wetting and freezing of the soil actually acts as a much better cultivator than, um, than machinery can. Uh, but of course, um, the other factor then is that uh, rotavators tend to come in. We tend to see more rotavators around here than I've seen in a lot of places. And that's where people use a lot of power to force a seedbed in. One of the things that we uh, notice around here, of course, is each time that you, you plough, you work, you till, you destroy structure. And what tends to happen is that uh, when you upset structure, you create a soil which holds on to water rather than allows water to move through. So these soils aren't particularly well drained, they're, they're quite flat, they have the, the big ditches all the way around them and uh, quite often you find actually on this field over here there's, uh, there's quite a big dip. So we get dips which tend to make small lakes over the winter time and traditionally you'll get um, drainage which runs from the dips to the reams to try and get rid of the water. So what we've done in this particular field, or actually what I'm going to hopefully show you this morning, is just a, a, a few of the things that have happened over this last autumn and the processes that, that have been good and bad. It shows you that uh, good things at the wrong time aren't a good thing at all. But that's the, the process of change and understanding and working with nature. And uh, actually that's the one thing that is the most important part of working with wet, difficult soils is that in the winter they're too wet and in the summer they get too dry. So we have a very small period uh, of time to be able to, to work them properly. This particular field here um, is actually going into maize. It's going to be direct drilled into maize, not been done yet. The, uh, the Sly uh, family run the strip cat and also the boss direct drill. And they have a whole host of equipment that they can attach to or use with. <clears throat> and uh, it's, uh, it, it makes a big difference when you've got a lot of equipment. So the idea of, of growing maize here um, isn't necessarily a good one. <laughs> uh, it's because perhaps they have the equipment to be able to do so. But one of the things that uh, we have a problem on the farm is, is time. And uh, the, the difficulty is that we have a short period of time to do things to the soil to help it remediate and move towards a, a better system. So traditionally in this area, where people who are direct drilling and growing cover crops, for instance, they do not like leaving the cover crops over winter. Uh, because the soils do not drain particularly well, uh, we, we 
rely on the winds coming from the coast, uh, which will be drawing moisture out of the soil. So leaving a cover over the surface or leaving straw as a debris is quite a big problem because it actually holds on to water. So traditionally here, straw gets taken off. If we possibly uh, bring muck back in, they will. Uh, cover crops traditionally get uh, taken off before Christmas so that uh, uh, by the spring, debris has gone and the winds can then draw, evaporate moisture from the surface. So I see our job of moving forward is that we, we want these soils to work. It's one of the biggest limitations we have is, is how do we open them up and get air in, uh, move moisture out, uh, bring organic material back in, which can be cycled uh, by biology, worms, and, and, and as this nutrients recycles, then we release nutrients to, uh, to the plants. So this is quite a tall order, order to ask when you've got soils with very little sand in. So one of the reasons we've gone for maize, uh, and again, uh, rye and triticale, is that we want to grow some land of this land to, to grow for a methane production. So having uh, rye and triticale in the rotation means that the crop will come off some, somewhere in the middle of June, towards the end of June, and that will give us enough time to be able to do some remedial work at the driest time of the year. So this particular field last autumn, it was dry enough. The strip cat had some uh, low disturbance Philip Wright lifters on and uh, they're, they're spaced half metres and it was, it was actually pulled through uh, this particular field. And either side of the, the areas that we lifted, uh, we drilled all radish. The all radish actually grew quite well and we chose all radish simply because we have to find a plant that can actually punch its way down through these very difficult situations. Um, as time goes on and, and as people talk about diversity, diversity is really important, but the first year or two or three maybe in this situation that we absolutely have to try and manage excess water and bring in more air to get these soils to flow. So the organic matters here are quite good, about 8%. But the thing is that we, we're not cycling anything uh, because the soils become um, too anaerobic through the winter time. So we can see, uh, if we look this way, uh, the, the lines from the autumn, from the strip cat uh, and, and where we managed to lift through. So in between where we've lifted, the idea is that we've, uh, we've put the the oil radish and when we drill the maize, um, which is hopefully be a bit later on today, they will follow the lines of where they've lifted. And so that means that the, the maize will be going into a, a, a more open situation. That This isn't ideal to be growing maize. Uh, one of the things that we have to do on this farm because of the poor autumn establishment is to is to bring in um, starter fertilizers. It's it's very important that we get establishment as quickly as possible. Um, although these soils have a lot of fertility in, uh, generally uh, it, it's tied up. And what we're trying to do is to get things established, uh, open the soils up, so we free the release of these nutrients, so we can get the full potential. So with the uh, with the low disturbance lifters that we've put on on the strip cap, you can still see the, the effects along the surface. It's very difficult actually to see the effects in here, but the spade goes in relatively well. You can see actually how difficult these soils are and, and how tight they can become. And it, but actually within the three months of what we've done, there's a really big, quite a big improvement in this situation. We've actually got some worms in these difficult soils and that's one of the things if we allow soils to function properly, worms will be the first back in the system. These are difficult, heavy situations, but they are actually breaking up a little bit easier. We have a um, very difficult situation in terms of uh, soil friability and this is why it's really important when we start uh, and drilling these crops is that we have uh, we have some starter fertilizer to help establishment and rooting. And this is going to take a little bit of time. You know, generally, we like to think that 
direct drilling is something you aspire towards. You change and build your soils and one day you think, well, actually the thing to do is to direct drill. I don't often come across that anywhere because people change normally because of a problem, a reason, a situation or a crisis. And if you look at the, the situation around here, and traditionally the high cost of creating seed beds, it's becoming sort of unsustainable. That the soils are getting worse and worse. And so we have to think of a different system. It's not about direct drilling as such. It's about how we can manage the soils to do less, get the soils to work more and the machinery to do less. And uh, this is a starting point and uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's a move forward and we're going to have to interfere with these soils for some time to come to be able to improve them to a point where they're self-functioning and at the mo moment they're not.